Okay, we're going to take a look around the Rockchip 7-inch tablet with software released on the 7th of July 2010. Uh, your device will arrive looking something like this when you turn it on. i uh, show you around uh, the system a little bit and the first few things you probably want to do when you receive the device. First of all, in terms of customizing the home screen, you can add widgets to the home screen in a number of ways. You've got three home screens which you can swipe between. To add a widget you can hold your finger in an empty area of the screen and click on widgets. I recommend that one widget you do add to the screen is the task killer. You can also add widgets by clicking the menu button here on the screen or the physical menu button at the top and choosing add and you get the same menu widgets. To delete a widget from the screen, you hold your finger on it and you drag it to the right hand side where it turns red and then it's gone. First thing you probably want to do on the device is connect to a Wi-Fi network. To do that go into settings. Uh, you have a settings icon within your application tray. Well, the quick way to get to settings from the home screen is to go to menu and settings. First option here is wireless controls and then tick the box to turn on Wi-Fi. Go into Wi-Fi settings and it will look for networks. Hopefully the one at the top will be yours, be the one with the strongest reception and it's the network closest to me here. Ask you if you want to connect, say connect and it will go ahead and connect to that network. You see the Wi-Fi icon appeared at the top there. To come out of the settings menu you can either keep pressing the back button here or at the top next to the menu button is back. So we're now on Wi-Fi. Just to show you that works. And there we're on the web. Within Android, whenever you come back to the home screen, the application you're in isn't closed, which means that at any one point a lot of applications could be running in the background. To see what applications are running, you can long press on the home button like this, and you get a box pop up showing your home screen and any other applications that are running. At the moment we're only running the browser. If you want to end all running applications, you can simply press your home screen widget for the automatic task killer, and that will tell you how many apps it's killed and how much free space is remaining. If you only want to kill one or two apps, then you can run the automatic task killer either from your application tray, or from the icon up in the notification area. Here you can select which applications you want to kill. They'll automatically all be selected. Be sure to deselect the task killer itself and then press kill selected apps. A few other popular widgets that you might enjoy putting on your home screen are the Facebook widget, and also the weather widget. For the weather widget, this will try and follow your location, uh, seeing as you don't have any uh, GPS on the device or a GSM signal to identify your location. If you untick this box, you'll be prompted to search for a location. And there we go. In order to add applications to the device, you can use a number of methods. One is to use the Android Market. 
The first time you open the Google Android Market or any other Google application on the device such as Gmail, you'll be asked to sign into or create a new Google account. Once you sign in, the device will begin synchronizing your Gmail content down to the tablet and will give you access to the marketplace. If you don't want to use Google services, or in any case in addition to the Android Marketplace, there are two other ways to install applications. The first is, if you go into your settings, applications, and tick the box here against unknown sources. Say OK to the warning. This allows you to install applications that are shared on the web or that your friends give you on memory cards or over email. All Android applications are wrapped up as .abk files. So if you go into uh, the File Explorer on here, either ES File Explorer or Astro, browse to the APK file and open it, then you'll be prompted to install it and you'll be able to do so. In addition to that, you've also got another marketplace called SlideMe. SlideMe is very similar to the Android Marketplace, perhaps uh, better categorized, but mostly the same content. Uh, there will be some applications on here that aren't on the Android Marketplace and vice versa, uh, but it's an additional marketplace for the, your device, and certainly if people don't want to sign into Google, then you've got another means of downloading applications through a, a marketplace. For ebook reading on the device, you've got Aldico. Aldico will read most ebook formats as well as give you access to the web to download further content. If you go to menu, you can switch the colours. And if you slide your finger down the left edge of the device, you can control the brightness. You've got two built-in music players, the audio player, and within the app tray there is also another player called simply music. The audio player also has a search facility which looks for free sources of music on the internet. The built-in video player will initially play videos in a preview window and then to play them full screen press the button in the bottom right here. When you exit the video player it won't remember your position in the video unless you press this bookmark button here which will say bookmark added, then when you come back it will remember your position.